Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to everybody within the church today. I know you, those of you at home can't see it, but it's so wonderful to see our legal capacity <laughs> for anybody says anything <laughs> back here within the church. Oh, and for those of you at home, you can now unmute yourself, because that seems to become the call of our generation. You're on mute. <laughs> great delight and great joy when Ashley confirmed that she will be taking our service today. So, Ashley, it's so nice to see you again. It really is. And really looking forward. It'll be fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. So, without further ado, if I could invite Ashley to deliver the opening blessing. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. It is an absolute pleasure to be back here. Um, Paul holds so many really amazing memories for me, and there's been some really pivotal moments of my own spiritual journey um, that have actually happened at Paul. So I just want to say thank you for being here, and also thank you for all of you for coming out on Mothering Sunday. Uh, because uh, for many of you that have to pull yourself kind of away from doing things with your family and I'm very acutely aware that it is a tender day to day for a lot of people for a lot of reasons so I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you all for being here so before I open the opening blessing I'd like to invite you to settle into that still quiet space and I'm going to read something for you to really honour the energy of Mothering Sunday today and then I'll move into the opening blessing so just allow yourself to settle and just Listen to these words. For all the mothers and the mother figures, for the grandmothers, the aunts, extended family members who mother, the soon-to-be mothers that wish they were mothers, the never wanted to be mothers, the it's complicated mothers. The birth mothers, the foster mothers, adoptive mothers, stepmothers, the used to be dad mothers, the more than one mum mothers, single mothers, separated mothers, stay-at-home mothers, unhoused mothers, grieving mothers, those who grieve their mothers, and those whose grief is complex. For all the communities that mother, and for all who depend on the great mother, let us tell the stories of all of the mothers, stories that could be true. Tell us of the warm mothers, soft and round, and likely to be found with flour on their nose, and always ready to pour you a glass of milk these mothers are increasingly rare. Tell us of the complex mothers who are like bubbles of champagne. They surprise your senses, they're unpredictable. And when you least expect it, they erupt with a pop. Stories that could be true. There are grouchy mothers, stressed out mothers, exhausted mothers, 
Mothers whose faces are lined with worry, whose spirits are tired and grey. Mothers who are wise and reliable, not prone to many words and a lot of noise, but you know that when you need them, they'll be there. Tell us of fierce mothers, the ones who love you even when you're wrong. The absent mothers, whose memory shimmers at the very edges of your heart. The distant mothers, the complex mothers, the loving mothers, the giving mothers, the too busy mothers. These stories all could be true. May we hold in our hearts today all of the mothers that we have known, those who have loved us and those who tried to love us. May we forgive the mothers who didn't get it right and try to release the knots of disappointment, anger, grief and pain in that healing alchemy. May we hold in our hearts the truth that true mothering and nurturing is a task that belongs to us all. However old or young we are, whatever your gender, may you make extra room for nurturing in your life this week. May you say something real to a store clerk, give a co-worker a genuine compliment and reach out. Take time to listen deeply to a friend. In our shared silence as we come into this prayerful space, may we remember and reflect and create anew the stories of love from this point forward. Stories that can be true. And remember that you are held and you are beloved. And so friends, with that ringing in our hearts, I'd invite you to settle into that space, to drop into the presence of your own heart to open yourself up to the presence of the Spirit and all of those people that we know and love, feeling the energy and the presence of those words I've had spoken, invoking all of those people in the Spirit world and all of those many relationships and encounters and people that have been in your life to come and stand with you today. And so we ask, Great Spirit, Mother, Father, God, we ask for you to come and allow your presence to be felt in this sacred sanctuary this afternoon. To come and stand with us as we stand in our own truth. As we come in congregation to celebrate today. To celebrate the fact that life is eternal. And that death does not break those bonds of love that we have come to understand. And on this special day, as spring is awakening and enlivening around us, May we recognise the promise of the springtime and a renewal of that commitment that we made our souls together before we came to this earth, that we would take part in each other's lives, that our mother and those women that have been around us will play an intricate part of weaving together our soul journeys. We would like to recognise and also offer the spirit of healing into this room this afternoon, recognising that Whoever needs it will take comfort from the light that we bring to this service. But for now, we would like to leave ourselves open in heart, in understanding that we are divine creations. We are divine incarnations on this earth at this time. And we step into our birthright to be able to bridge the divide because there is no divide. Because time is something that we have constructed. And in the world of spirit, as we hear over and over again, there is no such thing as death, and our loved ones are with us constantly, and we invite that spirit into the room this morning, this afternoon. And so, for the rest of the morning, <laughs> the spirit are coming in, the rest of the afternoon, we leave ourselves in your care and keeping, knowing that we are safe and loved. Amen. Amen. Ashley, absolutely beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd invite you now, please, if you care to, to join in and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not when in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you. Ashley, once more over to you, dear lady. Thank Reading you. an address or just philosophy, whichever takes your fancy. Okay, thank you. So, the reading that I've picked for you today is, and I'll tell you the reason why I picked it. I picked it because um, I'm working with, a, working with a lady and we were talking about the significance of things that happen and things and symbols that we come to associate with our loved ones, be they feathers or flowers or pieces of music or things that we come across. And how my belief is that all of these, in the divine intelligence that is the spirit world, they understand what our own internal directory is, what our own internal library is of the different references that we associate with people. And so this reading is called My Mother's Secret Language. And what I like about it is that it's a, a, a modern reading, a recent reading, because I'm also acutely aware that many of the readings about mothers and Mothering Sunday and poems are very much from that post-war or early part of the last century. And actually what we're looking at here is we're looking at society and what we as spiritual people need to bring to a modern day planet of the 21st century and what people are looking for. So I'm acutely aware of that and so I thought I'd pick a more recent reading for you. So this one is by Kristin O'Keefe Apowitz and it's called My Mother's Secret Language. From as early on as I can remember, books were the way my mother and I best communicated. They allowed us to say all of the things that we couldn't say. They were a secret language shared in plain sight. You see, I grew up a boisterous working class household. The youngest of three and born to two full-time working parents. Our household was loud. Each kid jockeyed for our parents' attention in different ways. And while each weary parent tried their darndest to knock out their household to-do list after a long day at work, I lucked out. In my way, my science-inclined brother and sister didn't because I shared something very special with my mother. She and I both loved books. My mum tried to instill a love of reading in all of her kids. But I was the only one for whom it really took. And so throughout my adolescence, my mother would casually hand me books that she thought I might like, and I devoured them without ever second guessing why she might have chosen them. Through my elementary school years at a strict Catholic school, my mother passed me books about women heroes, saints who shaved their heads, who fought for the poor and battled kings. Nancy Drew, upending mysteries while still doing her homework novels from the 1960s in which I was surprised to find my mother's own handwriting in the margins and pages as extra treasures. She had a rule for our household library. If a kid keeps reading something, then they're old enough to read it. So I was free to browse the shelves like a treasure trove and pluck books like the diary of Anne Franks earlier than perhaps she may have liked. And when I came to her trembling with anger at what had happened to Anne Frank and her family, imagine my surprise when a historical fiction book about a girl in a US Japanese internment camp appeared in my bedroom a few days later. Reading that book was the first time that I realized that books could unlock for me a truth that classrooms and schools might sidestep. But my mother was prepared to have these conversations with me through books. My mother had her own grown-up dreams of being a writer, and I could never tell if those dreams had been crushed for her or if she felt she'd allowed them to be crushed. As I grew older and my dream of being a writer remained unwavering, I could see that my mother was struggling. She desperately wanted to support me and support my dreams, but she feared what that may mean for me. Would encouraging me to go after a creative career make her complicit in a working class parent's worst nightmare, a young adult struggling to make it in the world. But where my mother's words were guarded, her book selections were fearless. She tossed biographies of writers on my bed, saying she'd heard good things, and then leave me to read about the hard roads that these writers had walked, the rejections, the hungry years, the successes that they were unable to cope with, the writing that saved them, 
and the writing that haunted them. I learned every lesson that I could. It was then I realised that all of the books that she'd given me, when I left home to study writing in New York City, I began to communicate back, sending her book recommendations I thought she'd love and I was introduced to you by professors. We gave each other books of empowerment as she got older. Books about relationships, complex issues, things I didn't feel able to talk about. Books about stepping into our potential. We also gave each other celebrity biographies. Where to get the best brunch. It didn't matter. It didn't matter to me if the books were statements or jokes. What mattered to me was that they were signs. When my mother passed away unexpectedly, the loss was astronomical. One of the first things that I remember thinking selfishly was, I wish my mum was alive for just five more minutes to tell me which book I need to read to get through this. But all I had to do was look around because my mother's gentle guidance helped me become the writer I had always dreamed of being. And I was surrounded by a life's work of writers who began filling up my mailbox with books that had helped them. Books that had helped them understand grief and how to deal with it. Books that they wanted me to have and they felt compelled for some reason to send me these books. The gift my mother gave me lives on in my new life as a step-parent. I too have been filling my family bookshelves with books and I imagine she, books that I imagine my stepdaughter may need in the future casually introducing her to heroes and stories that once ignited my fearless courage. I tell my husband that I feel closest to my mum when I'm with his daughter and I can feel all of the lessons that my mum taught me bursting through into my interactions with her. And maybe my mother knew months before I would become engaged to my now husband and over a year before my stepdaughter and I would exchange lockets in front of our friends and family, making a commitment of mother to daughter. Little did I know that my mother drove a heavy box to her local post office. And a few days after that, she entered the hospital and would never come out. The box was waiting for me when I came home from her funeral. And when I opened it, I found all of the 1950s childhood readers that I'd obsessively read when I was a child. They were hers from her childhood, woefully out of touch with modern day, but still filled with all of the stories that inspired me, grit and adventure. And my very favorite, the story of a tomboy and many other girls who weren't afraid to make a stand. I had loved those books so hard Half of their spines were broken, the pages were falling out, and the edges of the covers were frayed just to string. But there they were, just as I remembered them. My mother's note in that parcel to me read, Darling, I thought it was time to pass these books on to you. I imagine someone else in your life would love to read them too. Her last book recommendation, I thought smiling through the tears, and it wasn't even for me. Of course it was. Of course it was. So I really enjoy that reading, primarily because it speaks of some of the more difficult things that we don't find in Mother's Day cards on the shelves. And I don't know about you, and it's very tricky because I actually have my mum here in the audience, and I didn't know that you were coming today, Mum. <laughs> So how Good to time. add extra emotion to an already very <laughs> emotional day. It's difficult sometimes to find, words to, to find words to put into effect what we feel in our hearts. And there is no one size fits all. And I think we all recognise anyone that has been to a spiritualist church or heard demonstrations of mediumship, that there are many different kinds of relationships that we can have with those people in our lives that give us care. And to honour and hold that as very sacred, as was suggested to me during the opening prayer and as, as I was driving here, that our lives are linked to those people that are in and around us. 
I'm a believer in that. I believe that there is no such thing in this infinitely intelligent universe that would be left purely to chance. And so the people that have come into our lives have come in for a reason. And what I really like is about the hidden messages that are in that story. And if any of you have your own secret signals for the people that you love in the spirit world, I'd ask you to reflect on those now. And to think about all of the times that you've, when you needed it most, you've found a sign or a sim signal or something has happened. Or if you're blessed enough, you may even have felt the presence of your loved ones around you at that time. Because there is no such thing as time in the spirit world. They will come when they're needed to support us and uplift us. And as I was in the supermarket yesterday, I was very organised, you'll be pleased to know, and I had my Mother's Day card and present done a long time ago. It wasn't yesterday I was buying your Mother's Day flowers. <laughs> but one thing I noticed was in the supermarket, there was not a single flower left. There were just a couple of wilted bunches left at the bottom. And I reflected on how different that was to this time last year. And how, as we were approaching Mother's Day last year, I think globally and certainly in this country, we were almost in a sense of shock. That, that it was just so unthinkable that we weren't going to be able to be with people. And we were going into this new world, this new way, this new way of not being able to see the people that we love the most in the world. And I think this year people wanted to make a point. I think this year people wanted to make the effort and to make visible some of the things that maybe had been unspoken and unsaid. And that's one thing I think to take from everything that we have been through over the last year is that now we recognize the power of these relationships that we have on the earth. The power of who matters to us. The power of being in that moment that you think, I need to make that call. And that being the only thing that you think about. I find it beautiful how all of the spring flowers are emerging and many of the flowers in the bouquets are spring flowers and daffodils and primroses and beautiful spring flowers which for me always symbolise hope. That no matter where you've scattered those bulbs that have lain dormant in the earth, they spring up every year. I have a very untended pot that has been in my garden for at least two years and every year in the spring I'm surprised and delighted that despite all odds and despite my best intentions to do nothing with them, this pot of tiny narcissus springs up and it is always such a delight. And I continually wonder that even after such a cold, hard winter, that there is such a will and such a desire to move towards the light inherent in these tiny bulbs, these tiny bulbs that we give no thought to that they stretch towards the light. And even those forgotten bulbs push upwards through the hard soil. It's that will. And it's that same will that brings our loved ones to us and brings that connection to be palpable around us when our loved ones come to say hello. And I love that bulbs spring up in unexpected places as well. Sides of the roads, I love that. And I think God's gardeners, the little birds, or whatever it is, whatever circumstance caused that bulb to be planted there. And it sprung out of nowhere in unexpected places. And sometimes our memories of our loved ones come up in unexpected ways. It can be a smell of something that hits you in your heart in an unexpected way. You see someone who reminds you of somebody that you knew. And from a moment you see them from the behind and, and, and then you're willing them to turn around and you just thank spirit and say, thank you. I understand what you were trying to do there. You see, mothering is very primal. That mother energy is the first energy that we see. It's the first soul that we see when we touch this earth. So from that very moment, you have something encoded into your DNA something that binds you and connects you. And I find it beautiful that as I was reflecting this morning and, and last night, I was my grandmother, my nanny, was very close to me as I was thinking about today's service and thinking about Mother's Day and looking forward to my own children clambering onto my bed in the early hours of the morning with their cold feet and handmade cards and it being such a moment of joy. And I was reflecting my own nanny as she was approaching the end of her life. And she was getting ready to make that transition back home to the spirit. 
and how she spoke of seeing her mother around her house and around the bed, wherever she was, she, she spoke of her own mother coming. And I find it so beautiful. In the same way we have the cycle of life and the spring bulbs, we have the person that's there when we come into the world is the person, more often than not, that may be there, if not front and centre, then very closely behind to see us out of this world and returning home to spirit. So Mothering Sunday is a day to celebrate that mother power. And sometimes it can be difficult for us to, sell, to separate the mother spirit, the mother energy, that soul energy of the nurturing mother, and the sometimes very complicated, very messy, very human aspects of the people that we knew. And with age and experiencing our own life path, we come to see and recognise the enormous tenacity of the women in our life and the lineage that we come from, be that a lineage of blood or a lineage of our own spiritual beliefs and spiritual practice. And all of these amazing, incredible people have overcome the harshest of conditions in some cases to push up towards their own light and to experience life in the beautiful flower garden of the spirit. And so, as I said in the beginning, I recognize the great healing that is happening around the earth at this time. And we recognize that we have great privilege, that we are a generation, especially of women in the room and the men in the room who love and cherish the women in their lives, that we can speak up, we can stand up, we can vouch for ourselves, but we honour that that has not always been the case. For many of the women in our line, many spiritual women, they were unable to express that side of themselves and may have felt thwarted in their life goals. But we are also called, there is a duty upon all of us at this time to be a spiritual mother. Whether you are a mother of a soul on the earth at this time or not, and this is irrespective of gender. This is irrespective of any experience you have, of any age that you are. If you are sat within this sanctuary at this time, if you're listening to these words, then it means that there is a stirring within you to be of service, in whichever way that is. Be it as small as a mustard seed, or be it as large as your life's ambition to be of service to the spirit world, to stand on this platform, to take a service, to take a funeral, however that service is expressed for you. Being a spiritual mother has nothing to do with mothering. It's nothing to do with that. You do not need to identify as a mother at all. But what it is for us is to inspire, to speak, to offer a kind word to people that need it, to offer some encouragement, to identify those people who are struggling to push through the tough soil. To bring some fierce, tender compassion and to stand in your own truth and be clear in your own vulnerability on your own life struggles and those people will be magnetically drawn to your light like a magnet. For this reason, I want you to reflect on what it would take for you to fan the flames of God within your own soul, to recognise your own spiritual path and your own spiritual destiny. And so to close, I want to read something very beautiful. It was written in 1933 by Temple Bailey, and it was a very small, very insignificant article in Good Housekeeping magazine. But I think it's a beautiful way just to recognise that journey onwards that we have and that contract that we make. Is this the long way? asked the young mother as she set her foot on the very first path of life and the guide said yes and the way is hard and you will be old before you reach the end of it but the end will be better than the beginning and the young mother was happy and then she bore children and she could not believe that anything could be better than right now in these years. She played with her children. She fed them. She bathed them. She taught them how to tie their shoes and ride their bikes. She reminded them to feed the dog, to do their homework and to brush their teeth. 
The sun shone on their lives and the young mother cried. Nothing will ever be lovelier than this moment. And then the nights came and the storms and the path was sometimes dark. And the children shook with fear and cold and the mother drew them close and covered them with her arms. And the children said, Mother, we are not afraid for you are near and no harm can come to us. And then the morning came and there was a hill and the children climbed and they grew weary and the mother was weary also. But at these times she said to her children, you must have patience, a little more, a little more and we will get there. And so the children climbed and as they climbed, they learned to weather the storms. And with this, she gave them the strength to face the world. Year after year, she showed them compassion, understanding and hope but most of all, unconditional love. And when they reached the top, they said, Mother, we could not have done any of this without you. And the days went on and the weeks and months and the mother grew old and she became smaller. But her children were tall and strong. They walked with courage and they supported their mother. And then one day she lay down at night and looked up at the stars and said, this is the best day of all. My children have learnt so much and are now passing their traits on to their children. And when the way became rough for her, they lifted her and gave her strength, just as she had given them theirs. And then one day they came to a hill that they could not see the top of. And beyond the hill they saw a shining road and golden gates flung wide. And the mother said, I have reached the end of my journey. And now I know that the end is better than the beginning, for my children can walk with dignity and pride with their heads held high, and so can their children after them. You will always walk with us, mother, even when you have gone through the gates. And they stood and they watched her as she went on alone, and the gates closed after her. And they said, we cannot see her, but she is with us still. A mother is more than a memory. She is a living presence. Your mother is always with you. She is the whisper of leaves as you walk down the street. She is the smell of foods that you remember, flowers that you pick, and the very perfume that she wore. She is the cool hand on your brow when you're not feeling well. She is your breath in the air on a cold winter's day. She is the rain that lulls you to sleep, the colour of rainbows. Your mother lives un inside the laughter of your daughter. She's crystallised in every teardrop. She's the place you came from, your first home. She's the map you follow. She's your first love, your first friend, your first enemy, but nothing on earth can ever separate you. Not time, not space, not ever even death. And I wanted to share that with you. Thank you so much, everybody. Beautiful. <coughs> Ashley, stunning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And indeed now we can all link in with our own maternal energies and I love that saying regardless of gender. <laughs> we all have that giving energy, the one that we associate with our mothers here on earth or here in spirit matters not. But when we link in with this healing energy time now, we just ask for that love, that compassion, that upliftment and that healing that energy to flow through you as a conduit from the centre of all creation and out towards those places and people that you hold in within your mind. So just for this short time, just go with the music, conjure up those images of people that you know who need healing and never forgetting yourself also. For how can we be of best service to others if we are not at our best ourselves? So I'll leave you alone with the music just for this short time.
help us to instill within ourselves this knowledge, this understanding that healing is a gift to be freely given there for anybody and everybody to pick up the mantle and dispense that healing balm with love and affection. Amen. Seems a little unfair, but it's over to you yet again, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was lovely. Beautiful music, thank you, Robert. <laughs> okay, so what I would say to you um, is that um, if I come to you, would you mind dropping a mask a little bit? Is that okay for people? Fantastic. It just helps me because um, rather than me having to listen, I can kind of just watch the mouth moving. That might be a little bit easier for me. Okay. It's only when people start wearing masks that you realise you partially lip read. It's only when you start wearing masks uh, that you realise you can't hear anyone. Okay. Um, so for those people that haven't seen me work, sometimes I know exactly where I'm going um, and I'll say I'm coming to you. Uh, and other times um, I will be aware of the presence of spirit and I'll start to describe that person. Um, and then we'll see where we go with that. Okay. So, you said that nerves were good, Lawrence, and I should go off like a firecracker right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm very drawn to the lady with the rainbow scarf that sat second row from back. Is that okay? Is it okay to work with you? Um, I'm aware of a lady that's coming close to me, um, and this lady was very, very drawn to the complexities of mothering. <coughs> Um, and some of the challenges um, and she was listening very intently to some of those words and I also understand I feel like she's still pacing a little bit so um, she is um, somebody who would have liked to get her point across when she was on the earth if I put it that correctly she feels like a, a, a mum energy to me she doesn't feel like the tallest of ladies though she feels actually like she's quite a, a small in stature lady um, but she would have um, you would have known she was in the room <laughs> Thank you. She's very beautiful. She also brings some really lovely lilac blue flowers, kind of grape hyacinths. So not traditional bluebells, but the little grape hyacinths with the little, um, they, she would have loved the smell of that. It's the smell that I'm wanting. She also associates with a uh, woodland and I'm almost seeing like an oil painting of a woodland scene. Does that make sense to you? Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Is there a Michael on the earth plane? Yes. Fantastic, thank you. She's been with me since I was in that back room. I kept hearing the name Michael, 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 Michael. Um, so there's obviously she wants to draw close to Michael. Um, that makes sense to you to, to kind of pass that connection on because uh, that's the name that I kept hearing. Okay. And that's all I'm getting with that other than I'm getting a fingers crossed oh, kind okay. of sign if that makes sense. I, I, I'm not aware of what that message is, but thank you. Okay. She's, she's, got some, she's got some energy with her. She feels like she's kind of one of these bubbly energies. As she comes close, she gives me a lot of fluttering around the heart. Is that something that you can associate when she comes close to you as well, a feeling of like a fluttering? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm also feeling this was a condition that she had as well. I'm not sure whether that's what took her, but it feels that there's a fluttering. Yes. Um, she feels as if she's done an awful lot. As, she, as, I'm, as I'm with her and she's gaining in strength, she... she she has done an awful lot of healing since she's been in the spirit world, if you understand. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, she's also got a gentleman with her as well, who's very smart in stature. He's not stepping forward. He's kind of staying back a little bit, but he's very, he's very smart. He's, a, he's as smart as a new pin, this man. He would have cut a nice figure uh, when he was uh, dressed up beautifully. Um, but with him, he's got a kind of a big bare heart as well. I, I feel that there was a big heart with him. Um, and he allowed her to be a bit of a firework. <laughs> he was kind of slow and steady, and she was the firework in this. And he adored her. Utterly adored her. Um, and, gosh, it's rare, isn't it? And, you know, anyone who's out there and you, you kind of typify what your relationship would be like, there was a real adoration there, which is very, very rare. Um, just wanted to acknowledge that. But he's stepping back and letting your mum kind of step forward and be, and be the firework. She's also talking about a birthday towards the end of the year. I'm thinking kind of October, November, but it's kind of coach time. Yeah. Feels a significant date you can take, thank you. Um, and she's a very symbolic lady. 
she, when I kind of, I'm linking back to what I was talking about with the symbols, and that would be something that she would like to be quite symbolic. Even though she was very direct in what she said, actually, she liked the theatre. I get the impression that kind of a family meal or a family celebration would have been full of little touches that she would have bought. She would have remembered to bring things that had been used the year before or things that had been significant. She was a sentimental lady who liked touches. She's talking about some financial concern going on, and I'm very aware this is a, a kind of an open church, but she's trying to bring some soothing. I'm smelling like lemon. Trying to bring some soothing around that and some clarity um, around that, because at the moment it feels like a real muddle, real muddle. Um, and I can see her wringing her hands because I don't get the, even though she was very astute, I don't think she would have handled money. I think that would have been something done by probably dad I would have said that uh, but I don't think she would have handled money but it's something so she's kind of with you in your befuddlement uh, and she's trying to bring a bit of clarity um, okay. um, I'm also seeing a beautiful handbag with her as well and it's very unusual for fit but I'm seeing lovely handbags as well um, really lovely thank you I feel a little like she's you know she's come to church on a Sunday for Mother's Day and she would have it would have been a nice outing. Uh, it would have been a nice outing to come out with you for Mother's Day to come somewhere nice. It would have been a nice handbag. Okay. And she would, have, she would have done spiritual service in her own way. Okay. Um, I, don't think, I don't think she'd be doing this kind of thing, but I think she would have, been, she would have spoken. Uh, and she would have... Um, had philosophy of her own to deliver. <laughs> um, and actually she had a really lovely way of summing up things and putting things in a way that people would understand. And she could talk to anybody, whether it was the milkman or, you know, the lady in the manor house down the road. <laughs> yeah, okay. And is there a connection to Scotland as well with you? Yes. Fantastic, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, just as I was like, is there anything else? And she said, don't forget Scotland. And she showed me some beautiful heather extending across the moors, beautiful. And I'm kind of galloping across it in my walking boots. So, you know, it's really kind of to be outdoors as well and the connection to Scotland. Um, and also a Scottish brooch that my grandmother had uh, that's a Scottish brooch. Yes. That makes sense to you. Thank you very much. I wouldn't be surprised if they're probably together because uh, I think they probably would have got on quite well, actually, my grandmother. <laughs> it's well with her. It's not like they're cut from the same cloth. Lovely. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave her love with you. Um, thank you. Really beautiful. Uh, thanks to your mum for coming and opening the proceedings. Thank you. I worked with you, is that okay? Young lady in the red top, is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I was very drawn to you during the reading, um, and I was very drawn to your energy, and I was very drawn to the fact that you're a healer and you work in healing. Um, do you... Not really. Not yet, okay. Or not, I'm not going to open your Christmas cards for you, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> I'm aware of a healing presence kind of coming and making itself aware to you. Um, do you understand where the phrase Doubting Thomas would come in as well? Because that's what I'm hearing. No. Okay. Um, so, whenever the, the, the feeling that I'm kind of getting, I'm just going to see if the person who's coming to me, because I feel I have a man and a woman. They feel like grandma and granddad, to be honest, but um, they feel a little bit uh, old fashioned. So, I could even be going the next generation up because they feel a little bit old fashioned. Um, of their time, shall I say. I'm also aware of a lot of back pain uh, with granddad, um, and so I think he probably would have had a little bit of a tummy, or great granddad. Um, possibly. Okay, did you know them well? Because I'm trying to feel into that. Quite young. Okay. I'm going to keep working with you and just see because I might not be with you. I'm not feeling it's exactly popping. Okay. 
please listen in if you can take what I'm saying and you can recognise any of the energy because I actually realised there's quite a few people wearing red in the room as well which I hadn't I just focused on you and there's quite a few people wearing red okay so I will keep working with you um so the gentleman pastor spirit I'm feeling that he probably would have been around my height maybe a little bit taller um feels like a feels like my great granddad maybe a great granddad um depending I'm not even sure how old you are with a mask or I'm also getting the impression that they would have moved around a lot. So I don't know whether there were some military connections or some forces connection, but they would have moved around a lot. I'm thinking six or seven times they would have moved. Um, I'd have to check. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to keep going for a little bit longer and then I might push it out because I'm not feeling it. If I'm completely honest, if that's okay, it could, yeah, it could be me, but I'll keep going. And the name Maria that links. Can anyone else understand this? Okay. Thank you. Can anyone else understand it? Thank you. Is it okay? Thank you so much. And I was drawn to you like a magnet. So please just take the healing because I'm obviously drawn and the spirit are drawn to send and surround you with that healing at the moment. So thank you so much thank for working you. with me. Hello. Thank you so much. So you can take the gentleman and the um, wife that passed, gentleman with a bit of a tummy, yeah. granddad. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so, um, and the name Maria is very significant, and that energy coming around feels like it's um, surrounding you with some upliftment in a very structured way, <laughs> because I think that's what you need at the moment, and I'm feeling that structure coming towards you. I'm also feeling very prayerful, and feeling moved by the Spirit, and do you understand what I mean when you say that you pray and you feel moved by the Spirit? Okay, coming in very strong, very, very strong. Um, I have the feeling that I almost want to kind of genuflect. Um, and are you, you're feeling this around you in your own spiritual yeah. work right now. Okay, this is really, really interesting. Um, very interesting. Um, and your family are very interested in stepping forward and supporting you in that because you're in a little bit of a sixes and sevens of, and as to which direction you want to take it. And what I'm hearing, especially from your granddad, is it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It all you'll circle back to the beginning. Um, there's also some... Um, I'm feeling on the web of our family, on the tendrils, on the edges of the family, there's some concern about some people in the family. Yes. On the f not directly connected, but on the kind of fringes. I'm not thinking you speak to them that often. Okay. Um, they're acknowledging that concern. Um, but there's a real unsteadiness there that wouldn't suit you to get too closely involved with it. If you understand yeah. what I mean by that, thank you. Um, your grandfather's a very... Um, a very, very strong energy. He's got kind of sturdy foundations, very sturdy foundations. And uh, he's around you an awful lot at the moment. Um, he's also um, bringing to me um, being, out, being outside in nature and he's bringing to me um, listening to your body, which is a very strange thing for a gentleman of that generation to do, but to listen to your body a little bit more than you maybe are. Um, I'm also getting connection to Ireland. Do you understand yes, connection yeah, to Ireland? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because I had to, don't forget Patrick. And it's like, oh, here we that's go, Maria, the Irishman. Maria. <laughs> Maria and Patrick, don't forget Patrick. Thank you. Um, and yeah, with that, and with that comes, again, you have faith coming through many different strands of your family, actually. Yeah. Faith is very, very important yes, in your yeah. family. Um, this is not a, you are not a new discoverer of the divine within you. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, um, and you were taking on board what I was talking about, spiritual mothering and being that mentor um, to people in your life. Okay, so so this is this is speaking to no matter what agenda that we can be spiritual mentors to people that come into our life, and I'm feeling that mentoring energy around you at the moment. Um, and I don't think it's you looking for a mentor. I think someone has come, literally landed into your lap that is asking some really big questions, and you're able to put it in a way that makes sense to them. Um, this person that's come into your life is, ex is, is in difficulty um, and you are assisting them more than you will ever know and I'm having real thanks and a real warmth, heat, heart thanks coming um, for all that you're doing which is you're not even, you're not even recognising how these ripples are going out um, and the conversations that will follow. Okay. And you're a swimmer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah, so I'm just being made aware of how proud uh, your granddad is of you that you're keeping your head above water. 
um, that actually you never have to worry because you can always sustain yourself. Uh, and I'm seeing no matter how far out you go, you're always sustaining yourself. And he's very, very proud of that. Um, and you're, he feels like a great communicator. I don't know whether you work with him clairvoyantly and he comes through quite a lot, but he's an exceptional communicator because I can taste the sea salt as I'm swimming in the sea. Yeah, okay. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me as well if um, he was also, uh, he probably wasn't spoken about, but a healer in his own right um, and would have worked with healing. Um, I don't think he was a kind of a, a hands-on healer as it were, but he would have done his own thing. And there's some family research going on at the moment into an obscure line in the family. That's the Irish. That's the Irish side, okay. Oh, I, I, it, feels, <laughs> it feels like, it feels like it's, it's just pain. never ending. It's a, it's a real pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, yeah, it feels really funny and I'm kind of getting in, when he, when he laughs it would have been a really big laugh, um, yeah, as he's laughing about that. Very, very obscure. And everyone's got the same name. <laughs> Father to son, it's got the same name. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's, that's probably all up there. Um, he's a, he's, he, he knows when to leave a party. <laughs> so he's sending so much support to you and thanks for what you do. Um, and with your own spiritual direction, it matters not. We all circle back. It all circles back and it's all the same thing. It matters not what you choose to put your intention in to work with. Um, your you're building the banks of the river to hold more capacity. And it matters not whether you're building those banks with bricks that are Reiki or healing or clairvoyance or running circles or philosophy. You're, you're building the capacity for spirit to work with you. Um, and that's what I'm kind of feeling. Strong banks. Thank you. Thank you so much for working with me. Have I got time for a quick one? Thank you. <coughs> I heard the name Fred or Frederick, uh, which is coming around, um, and I feel a connection to Germany. Um, I'm not quite sure of the, un the connection with that yet. Um, and I'm also having a connection to London or um, some kind of, what are those things ate in London? Those things in the shells, they're seafood. Jelly like deals. Jelly deals. Oh no, it's not that, something Welk. in a shell. Welks. Welks. Can anyone understand uh, a connection to London, Fred, a connection to Germany, and something like that? Oh, hello, lovely, at the back. You can take that. May I work with you? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so horrible. Oh, okay. So, it doesn't feel, I feel like I have a lady with me, even though she's talking about Fred. Um, because she's and she's 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 a lady that likes to get things done. I'm seeing her roll her sleeves up. She would have um, she would have had a stature that belied how much she actually could crack through in a day. She was a very very hard working lady, but not hard working as in physical manual labour. But she she ticked a lot off. Yeah. She got a lot done. Yeah. Um, she was a very very accomplished lady as well. That actually there was no such thing as I can't do that. It was I haven't learned how to do that yet. Uh, very, very positive. She had an exceptionally positive mindset. Um, I'm also aware um, that towards the end, maybe not quite so positive, and she struggled quite a lot uh, with not being able to do as much. Yeah. And that was a real frustration. Yes. And the frustration sometimes became complex for you. Okay, I just want to acknowledge that. But she's here full of joy with her sleeves rolled up, but she recognises that was a challenge. Yes. Um, Okay, she's also bringing me a very, very sore throat and very dry mouth as well, um, which again, I would associate towards the end of her life. She's a very physical lady. She comes in with a lot of physical energy. She comes in with a real sense of who she is. And again, you would know who she is when she arrives in a room because um, she had such spirit with her. Spirit. Um, I'm also having the impression that she, uh, books were something that were very, very sacred as well. <laughs> very, very special. You know, you don't write in books, you don't break the spines. Books are something very, very important. Um, okay. 
Um, she's coming to bring you some healing because I'm aware of some healing required at the moment. Um, just struggling a little bit. Uh, nothing to be worried. She's just uh, bringing that consciousness to me that she's around. Um, and she is with you when you're in the garden and she's with you when you're outside in those times when you're doing your jobs. You're very aware of her presence uh, with you. Okay. Um, and she's very matter of fact uh, that it was all about getting fresh air, exercise and good food. <laughs> good literature or anything. <laughs> She's very, very beautiful energy. She wants to come and be recognised on Mother's Day. She appreciates how selfless you are, that actually for you, much of your energy is expelled doing for other people and putting other people first. And today she said, I want to come for you. Okay. Uh, and for that to be acknowledged. And she's also bringing a basket of violets and violas uh, to you in a beautiful, what do they call those baskets? Like herb gathering baskets, really beautiful. And they're kind of spilling out and over the top. So with that, the colour purple, um, very, very healing colour um, and working on that awareness of the spirit, opening to the awareness of spirit. She's also bringing to me a beautiful ring uh, that she wants to be acknowledged. And I feel like this ring would have been significant um, and it would have been unusual for the time. I don't know whether it was the setting or the particular stone, but it was extremely unusual. I'm seeing something that looks like a cocktail ring or a dress ring. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm not quite sure of the colour. Um, I'm going to try and get the colour. It's just I saw a flash of it. Um, she's a lady that likes to, to stand out in a way that felt appropriate. But she liked to be... If the crowd went that way, she would go that way. Yeah. <laughs> She just wanted to be acknowledged to you. I say just, she's been here all the time and she's with you all the time anyway. But thank you so much for working with me. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Ashley. Thank you, everybody. If I didn't come for a message, um, your loved ones are with you. Absolutely. Wonderful. We've got an extra special. We've got a very lovely gentleman who found this church uh, a little while back. And he loves writing poems, do you not, Jim? So, Jim has written a poem for Mother's Day, and he'd like to share that with us today. Don't do that here, we'll end up married. <laughs> Is there a minister in there? <laughs> okay. Yep. There you go, sir. Nice to see you all. Since Christmas, it's been ages since we've managed to get to church. We came last week and it was nearly full, but it's lovely to see all you people now. I'd just like to say thank you to Lawrence for giving me the privilege and Ashley the privilege to send my poems, which I like to share with people, that's why I write them. I was inspired by my dear wife who passed into spirit last year. But I still keep writing poems and I'd like to share this one with you. Mother's Day. Once a year comes a very special day. Flowers with cards are given in a special way. That's why it is always called Mother's Day. Beautiful flowers are put on quite a display. It means much to a mother with a child, only the best for someone so meek and mild. Other flowers are brought in a beautiful bouquet. Some are sold in a colourful spray. Mums work hard every single day. Showing appreciation, this seems the best way. A few tears may be spilt with laughter and joy. Seeing a smile on mum's face explains the reason why. To deliver from a forest, flowers make her day, for this seems the most loving way. A bunch of red roses will capture her heart. Many flowers will follow from the very start. To receive those flowers shows what she is worth. A bunch of tulips growing from this very earth. 
we think of mums when hearing a baby's cry. They are all blessed when God himself passes by. And there's a small little poem I wrote which I'd just like to share with you. Thank you, Lord, for this. It's actually, I've called this shared a dream. Well, we all dream, don't we? Sometimes we have night nightmares, but still. <laughs> <coughs> have you ever wished to share a dream so real and beautiful as it may seem? In my heart I know that it could come true. That is why I wish to share my dream with you. <clears throat> I dreamed of a world without violence or crime, where life evolves slowly without the essence of time. <clears throat> a safe haven for children who can play without fear, for people are so caring who live their lives here. How beautiful are the colours of the wind, sea and sky. Such beauty filled with emotion brings a tear to my eye. The air that you breathe, completely free of all pollution, it seems that in this world has now found the right solution. On awakening from this beautiful dream, I find it hard to realise what a wonderful experience that I had the moment I closed my eyes. Perhaps one day all our dreams will just happen to come true. That is why with these few words, I have shared my dream with you. You're welcome. <laughs> Can I just say to Ashley, you. your mum was a million to me because we, well, we knew each other at Weymouth Church for years and she helped me so much. And with Alison, she's Hi, our Jim. lovely. Hi, Jim. My mum's girl. over there. <laughs> uh, oh, she's standing there. Bless her. Jim. Hi, darling. Mum's <laughs> here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim, that's lovely. Thank you so much. It's lovely to see you, Pat. Lovely to see you too. <laughs> nice way these things all oh, come together, isn't it? Working hard. Which Gorgeous. way? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're right, mate. Thank you. All. God bless you all. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Ashley, my darling, if I could ask you please for the closing prayer. Thank you. Well, that's just about... Yeah, that's the emotions, no? Oh, I said to Lawrence before I came out, I said, oh, today is very emotional. <laughs> if I give you the sign, Lawrence, and step in, and okay. Jim, that was so beautiful. My goodness. What a gift. So everybody, it's come to that point we're going to close in prayer and send you all off with a closing blessing. So I'd invite you to go to that still quiet space and allow your energy to settle, to take one deliberate breath to fill your lungs with some fresh air, just to settle into your body and just to allow everything that's happened to wash over you and all of the feelings and memories that have come up to just lodge them and nestle them safely in your heart. And know that the healing will continue to happen and those memories and symbols and signs will continue to come to you long after we've left this place. And so we'd like to say thank you to all of our loved ones who have been with us this afternoon, who have come and made themselves known, who have come to be with us to share this special time, who are aware of everything that is going on with you in your lives, who are aware of all of those secret thoughts within your heart, all of those times you call out for help, know that they are only a breath away. And as the spring flowers come up again, let us be reminded of hope and the hope that is settling over this world and being steadfast in our spiritual work and everything that we've done over the year in the dark, quiet soil where we've been incubated and being looked after by the spirit, allowing that time to heal and develop ourselves is now coming into life, bursting into springtime life. And so I send you from this place with a blessing that you are that divine child, that you have the spirit of the eternal forever with you, that you are a spark of the divine, and that all of those people in your life come to be with you. As soon as you send your heart or put mind to mind, know that they will come and be with you. And so a blessing on every single person here. And so it is. Amen.
Amen. Ashley, absolutely such a beautiful and moving Mother's Day service. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you everybody for being here today. It's so wonderful that the church can provide this support and service. Thank you too to all you wonderful people joining us from the comfort of your own homes. And now, the moment of the big reveal. <laughs> if you're wondering what these are on your seat, inside a little paper disc. I cannot get in these bags. These bags are not designed to open, I tell you. Each of the little paper discs is impregnated with wild flower seeds. Beautiful. So take them on with you. You can put them in a pot, put them in the garden, just leave them as they are and seeds will flower. And it's just fitting as well with the talk of the earth energies mm, coming in. Gorgeous. The link there with Jim and I was sworn to secrecy by your mum. Yeah, All right, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I feared for my life. Don't tell her I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> so, oh, what a wonderful day. Thank you all for coming. I would ask, please, as you leave the church, if we leave from the back first, that way we avoid crossing over each other. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and we hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. You're psychic, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Thank you. I was, oh, you're so welcome. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was so drawn to you. I kept clocking you. Um, but yeah, really, really drawn to you. Thank you. I don't know. Well done, Oh really? Oh crikey, okay. Wow, yeah. This is this is lovely. I'm just safe. So oh. oh, so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there, you look beautiful. Your hair looks lovely.